Hello YouTube, RJ. Hey, Hurricane Milton can slow me down, but he can't take me out. I'm back. We were about, uh, I can't remember, four or five days without power. Good three, three and a half days without internet. Kind of sucks, but luckily I've got that whole house generator, so we had power, we were comfortable, we had hot showers, everything. Cell phone kept working, was able to hotspot off the phone and get the TV to work so we could watch TV. So anyway, <clears throat> Been a little busy cleaning up. You might hear a little bit of a froggy raspiness to my voice. I'll apologize for that. Had the hurricane to deal with. Not a lot of fun. Went right over us. Pretty rough night. Thought, you know, it's those nights when you're not sure your house is going to hold together. You just, you know, you pray and hang in there. We made it through. We had one point where we had a very loud noise and the house shook. Wasn't sure what happened. Turned out one of the large oak trees had broke off. These are very large oak trees. I mean, this oak tree is was probably 70 feet tall. Large part of the top of it broke off, fell into the yard, embedded itself a couple feet in the ground. Literally could feel it shake in the house. It was that strong. Hear it, feel it. Of course, it's dark. It's can't see anything. You don't know what's going on. A lot of fun. But anyway, won't put you through the whole story. But uh, when the sun come up and uh, we were able to get out there after the hurricane left, the weather was nice. Uh, it was cooler than normally. Normally, it's very, very hot after a hurricane. We went out to find that our driveways were blocked from tree. Uh, luckily, no major damage. Spent the last many, well, basically a week since the hurricane went through, cutting up trees, getting them out of my driveway, uh, cleaning up branches, leaves, different little damage pieces, getting them out of the yard, getting it cleaned up. Just didn't have time to get in the lab and do anything for YouTube, so I apologize for being vacant for a week, but I'm back. I'm going to put a little video here to get us going again. I've got some things in the pipe for you. I've got a two-parter coming up where we're going to make some things, and uh, hopefully that'll be a little interesting to you. So anyway, here's what I got. No matter what, hurricanes, none of that matters. China, stuff just keeps coming, okay? I can't stay off AliExpress. I can't stay off eBay. Things just keep coming. So... Got another bag for us to open up. Got a couple items I've already opened up the bag they were in. Take a look at. And so let's see what's in this bag. And then we'll look at some of this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up and do a little testing and calibrating on that. Or not calibrating. Testing to see how accurate. Testing the calibration. How's that? See if it's, if it's usable, if it's accurate. So anyway, a couple things that I had ordered. I'm not sure what's what. So... Let's open this up. You know, order so much stuff and it, you know, takes a couple weeks. When I'm opening this, honestly, I don't know what I'm opening. I, sometimes I can't remember what I've ordered. Sometimes I don't know what order it's coming in. So, what do we got here? Well, what is this? Oh, I know what these are. Got a couple. Make sure I'm not throwing anything away here. Got a couple of, of little circuit boards. Let's go ahead and open one up so you can see it. These are PD decoys, if you're familiar with that. What it is is, you know, USB PD is where the device can ask USB to give it different voltages, you know, let it know what it needs. And so if you want to take a device that's not USB PD capable, and you want to make it work with a USB PD, uh, you know, power source. You need a way to basically send the right signals. I guess that's it. I guess that's it. Lock. You have to have a way to convince the PD of what voltage you need and such. So if you want to do that, if you want to do projects and be able to plug into PD units and get different voltages up to like 20 volts or whatever. Uh, I think some of them go 28 actually. <clears throat> they make these neat little boards. Let me get over here for our downward camera. I'll bring it up a little. I'll bring it up a little for you. Get a little closer. I can zoom in. Let's, let's physically get it up here. It's just a little board, and if you can make it out, there's, th these can be different voltages and stuff. I've ordered these, I'm trying to remember which ones 
I got, what voltage I got of these. Seems like you can adjust them. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, that's right. If you jump her down here, if you can see on the bottom, there's little SMB type pads that you jump her. You solder a little solder across. And by doing that, you can choose what voltage you're telling it to be. So if you don't do anything, it's 5 volts. So as it is, it's 5 volt. So what happens is you can take the positive and negative off of this, put some pins in it, hook it to your board, or you could physically mount this and jump her off and basically have you a USB-C plug-in for your little parts, for your little kit, whatever you're building, your little design or whatever. And by plugging it in, this thing will communicate with your PD charger like the one we use for uh, you know, our HS01 um, soldering iron. This rascal, you know, I've got a. Let me grab it here, let you see. You know, I bought it and the kit came with a 65 watt PD charger. So I could use this to power my projects up to 28 volts by just setting it correctly. So from 5 volts to 28, I can say, hey, it's what I need. And this thing will then turn around and supply me with. You know up to 65 watts at that volt so i i picked a couple of those up that's what these little boards are for and so i decided to pick me up a couple of them i will put a link in the descriptions of this just in case any of you can have a need for it and say hey i could use that and you'll see what i got and you can shop around maybe find one you like better but they weren't expensive i don't remember what they are but i'll put a link and you can see just check out the description to find out okay next thing i got was this little jewel and this was like three four bucks maybe i'll put a link for this too i had to add a battery doesn't come with a battery i did put a battery in it and what it is is i don't think i've peeled the plastic off either on this hopefully there's plastic and not scratching the screen yeah there's plastic yeah looks better what this is it's a tire gauge they call it but it's really what it is is it's a digital depth meter and really designed to do tires but you don't have to use it on tires i have times when i have like holes that i want to measure i'm doing something 3d designing a part or something and i need to know the depth of a hole this allows you to measure that as you can imagine let me see if i can find something real quick and we'll we'll measure it and show you what i'm talking about here we go we'll bring back out our charger then let's see say for some reason I needed to know the actual depth of this USB connector hole. I could take this, put it on there like it, go down, pull this out, and we can see that we are exactly 0 0.407 and a half inches, or if we want to do millimeters for my viewers overseas, it's 10.35 millimeters. That's what this is for. So the next thing I got, because I'm not sure. I think this might be. There's a chance this might be what I think it is, being it's a bigger box. Let's, uh, let's open it up. Many of you were very interested and active in the radio, the little radio kit, the R10 radio kit that I built. Um, got a lot of comments. A lot of people still commenting, thinking that, you know, they're sure I've done something wrong and that's why it's not working well and everything. And that's fine. I've explained over and over again. A lot of people thought, well, you got it near a computer monitor and you're running it in a room with a bunch of stuff. And I've tried to explain that I've tested this with, with everything off and such off camera. But of course, to be able to film and show you guys what I was doing and to be able to show you be over by my radio, I had to turn my computers and stuff on to do that. And trust me, there really wasn't any big difference between it. That was uh, seemed to be interesting to a lot of people. They had a lot of questions and, you know, felt that I could probably, the radio works better than I think it does and all that. So, you know what? I bought another radio kit. This one's a tube. This is a Chinese tube radio kit. And again, bags of parts. Three tubes, circuit board speaker. Runs on battery. It's a old style tube regenerative. It's got one tube that is a regenerative receiver circuit. And then it's got, I, from just a glance, what I can see, it looks like maybe there's two tubes that are, are audio amplifiers. 
this is going to be an upcoming project. I'm going to build this radio. One of the things I'm going to do is build it, and then I'm going to compare it to the R10. So I think that'll be interesting. I've also got one other potential radio coming that we can potentially build and kind of compare and see how each of them compare. We'll do it on the same antenna. So that'll be an interesting thing for us to do. So that's, a, that's another little project I've got going for us. So let's talk about this over here. This is what we're going to play with today. If you think back to the video, many videos back, where we built the little crystal tester circuit. It's the G5UUR, if I remember right, circuit. Very common circuit for testing crystals, but it's a little oscillator. And basically, you put a crystal in it, and you look at what the frequency it oscillates at. And do a little math. You take a, you take a capacitance in and out. You take those two, you did the math. If you go back and look at that video, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It told you you could calculate all the modal properties of the crystal so that you could calculate capacitors to build you a crystal filter. That's what you were out to do. And I was using my signal generator, which has a frequency meter counter in it also. And of course, I've got that very accurate time base, external time base that we got from China that I put in the box and hooked up. So I use that as a base to make my signal Pretty, pretty darn accurate uh, for frequency counting and, and, well, signal production and everything. I know it's pretty much on the money, but I had said that, you know, if you wanted to make this a standalone, you would just order one of those cheap $8 Chinese frequency counters. Well, I've never had one. I've seen people use them before on it, on YouTube and such. So I had, I had ordered one. And so this is it. And I thought it would be interesting to know Okay, it's $8. If it works good, great. But we need to know, is it any good? Is it accurate? I mean, what good is it to use it on something like that if it's not going to be accurate? So I went ahead and picked one up. This is it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig this thing up. It comes with two red and black cables with the little Molex connectors on it. And I don't see any instructions, but I've kind of roughly seen people use them, so I think I know how to use it. This one is your power and plugs in over here and it looks correct as far as red is positive and negative is minus. And this is going to be my signal input over here. And interestingly enough, the colors aren't right because I show a sine wave on the board. Maybe you can see it here if I get up close enough. Maybe we can stay enough in focus. See the little sine wave mark here and the ground symbol over here? If you plug this wire in with their connector, the black becomes your signal and your red becomes your ground. To me, that's absolutely backwards, but we just need to remember that and hook this up correctly. Okay. It's got a, a 7805 voltage regulator on here. I don't know exactly what power level this is supposed to operate at. I got almost nothing. It doesn't, I can't see where it says, but being it's a 7805, we know we need about seven and a half to be safe because of dropout. Probably your 12 volts is probably good. This thing probably doesn't pull enough current that it get that hot, but I'm probably going to set up about 10 volts just to be safe. Probably 12 volts is totally acceptable. That's probably what they intend you to use it on. But we'll start out with 10 volts. Won't, won't affect accuracy. It's just going to determine how much voltage has to be dropped by the 7805, so therefore how much heat it's going to generate. That's all it's going to change. Let me do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up with the linear power supply, get it set to about 10 volts, get it down here with some connectors, get a connector down from my signal generator, and we will go ahead and power this thing up. We'll send a signal to it, and we'll see what it looks like, how accurate it is, does it even work. I will probably go ahead and set up the other camera to be able to see the screen. Give me a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got a piece of paper and I've jotted down 1 megahertz, 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 15, 20, 25, and 30 megahertz. So I'm going to go ahead and write down here that it's reading 0.99996. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we'll go up here and we're going to turn this up to 5 megahertz and see what happens. Okay, now I'm set to 5 megahertz. We'll let it stabilize out a little bit. And we'll be able to say that it's doing four. I'll go ahead and put a zero here. 4.99997. We're going to call it 
We're going to call it seven. It's flickering, but we're going to call it seven because it seems to, looks like it's going to stabilize out at seven at some point. So let's go ahead and take her up to 10. There's 10 megahertz. Let's see what it says. I'm getting 9.9999952. Okay. Let's go to 15. And I'm going to say I'm getting 14.9999928. Go to 20. And we're going to say 19.9999004. Uh, okay. 25. Let's go 24.9998880. And last but not least, 30 megahertz. What do we end up with? 29.9998. We're going to call it 6. Okay, so from that, I'm going to go over the computer, punch this in a spreadsheet, and uh, just a moment, I'll show you the spreadsheet. We'll talk about it. I'll okay, I threw this together into a spreadsheet for us. And as you can see here, here's the frequency it should have been, what it read. If we look right here, our error is very consistent. It's not going up as we go up in frequency it's just an offset error of you know here it's 0004 here it's 00046 48 so you know it goes up just a little bit to about 10 megahertz but from there till 30 it's uh, it's flat exact same error rate all the way up and I've charted out here you can see that you know there's a little bit little bit more the, the uh, slope is a little different right down here and just a tiny bit different here. And then you can see it's absolutely a straight linear progression. It's uh, it's not getting farther away from its target frequency on each step. So, hey, it's seems pretty accurate. I mean, look at this is percentage. I mean, you couldn't ask for to be more accurate than that. I mean, you're talking at 00048%. That's not take these two zeros off, this would be 1%. That, that's actually what the percentage is. It's, it's a tiny, tiny error. I mean, you know, four hertz out of a million hertz. So impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. It's, it's pretty accurate for what it is. I mean, wow. It's, it's, I think it costs like $8. So, you know, what could you ask for it? But I, I'm pretty impressed. So yes, this would, uh, this would be plenty accurate enough for doing your crystals. And bear in mind, if it's off just a little bit, you're, you're, you're matching crystals together. So if it's constantly reading off the same amount, you're still going to be matching your crystals together accurate. You might believe they're just a tiny bit one way or the other, but as far as matching them, let's face it, that percentage off isn't going to, that we can't get that kind of accuracy anyways. Hey, I say this would work very, very well. So these things aren't bad at all. Pretty, pretty nice little frequency counters really for the money. That's going to sum it up for us tonight. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little bit. I'll put those links on the description of the video if you want to go find uh, what these products are. Hope to catch you in the next video. See you in the video.